Hello again. Yeah, welcome back to my Kerbal Space Program series where I'm exploring the Cal Below Planet Pack mod. Um, today we're launching a space station, although we're not visiting uh, the Cal Below system. Um, this space station that I have here on the top of this super long rocket, precarious, precariously atop this giant rocket, um, is going to serve as a base camp for refueling for my further missions into the Cal Below system. Um, We've explored most of the uh, system that the mod initially spits you out in once you go through the wormhole orbiting Sarnus. Um, and we're starting to need to go to these other star systems. The Calvillo Planet Pack has three different star systems, not including the local black hole system. So yeah, there's a lot more to explore and we're going to need a lot more fuel to go to these spots. Um, so I'm just setting up an uh, uh, asteroid space station refueling base. Uh, near the rings of Sarnus, uh, which is the Saturn analog of the Kerbal Space Program system if you have Outer Planets mod installed. Um, it's a great mod, I highly recommend it. I basically play with it as if it's stock. It has, you know, uh, you know Saturn, Uranus, uh, Uranus, um, and uh, Neptune and Pluto analog systems uh, that are stock alike and work very well with the base game so I play with those as if those are stock but if you don't have Outer Planets mod installed uh, the Cacao Below mod will still work it just places the wormhole around Joule but the wormholes around Sarnus since I have Outer Planets mod installed and we're there's there's you know very conveniently some asteroids floating around the rings of Sarnus so I'm gonna be playing I'm gonna be placing this uh, fuel mining and refinery base around uh, the rings of Sarnus docked to an asteroid hopefully in the future and it'll serve as a refueling point or a base camp for my next missions into into the Cal Below system through the wormhole so I have my craft in orbit here and I'm just setting up my uh, transfer window to Sarnus. Sarnus is that tannish orbital line above Joule um, and so I don't exactly know the angle but I just go maybe like 15 to 20 degrees past 90 degrees, and that seems to work fine. So I'm just starting my escape burn here. Uh, yeah. And we're gonna have to do multiple burns at periapsis to make use of the Oberth effect, which you might have heard about which essentially just makes your burns more efficient the closer you are to periapsis. So, um, yeah, I think it's only gonna take our second pass here to fully escape. And you know, just to keep my vector right, I usually uh, just escape um, and then point directly like due west or something. Um, and fire at that point just so I don't change my vector flying prograde if that makes sense so I'm just continuing my uh, my interplanetary burn um, I'm gonna have to get up to like over I don't know 2,000 meters per second orbital speed to get all, all the way up there and so yeah I'm just trying to raise my apoapsis to intersect Sarnus's orbital line which is that tan one above Joule so that'll take a second. Maybe I'll just sit back and let you guys watch that, I guess. But yeah, I've got a multi-stage interplanetary nuclear transfer stage, um, which is really helpful for uh, the outer planets since they're a lot further out than Joule. You can get really great um, Delta V with uh, like a asparagus staged nuclear transfer uh, kind of tug thing going on here um, yeah some players don't like to do it this way because they're uh, they don't like to leave you know just junk flying around in space and if I went into my tracking station it'd definitely be an issue because I have like I think 70 empty tanks just floating the solar system last I checked which could be kind of a pain but you know you make sacrifices for the sweet sweet nectar of Delta V that we're all playing for in this game um, yeah. Yeah, and I actually played this game for like such a long time 
everyone, I heard everyone talking about like Delta V and I had no idea what it is. But it's basically your ability to change speed. So your craft's ability to um, accelerate over time or to, you know, like the amount of speed you can change with the fuel and mass that you have on board. That's just a really simple way of explaining it. I'm sure like somebody will actually it's a vector because their velocity the speed and direction you know i don't know but what i'm doing here i'm just making a maneuver node to adjust my inclination looks like we're gonna actually um miss it here just a little bit so i'm gonna have to do a radial burn um just to get my intercept here Looks like I got it. It's uh, almost like six and a half hundred meters per second of delta V. Um, that's not too bad. Um, I think once I like you know really really nail that transfer window, I won't, I won't have to do this kind of thing in the future. But kind of lazy about that. I just eyeball it. I don't use like transfer window planner or anything like that. But yeah, I'm actually kind of excited about this space station, um, which is actually, believe it or not, my first um, space station with a, you know, like that ring system thing. Those rings there, those will be like habitation rings of my space station, and they'll be uh, spun up to what feels like curb and gravity. That's the idea. Um, you might have seen that kind of design for spaceships in science fiction. Um, basically, you know, spins around and you'll be pulled towards the inner outside of the ring, kind of like centripetal force, like you're on a merry-go-round or something, and your big brother's like spinning you till you're crying and almost falling off. You think you're going to die, that sort of thing. Except it's spun up to the right um, RPM that you feel like you're, uh, you know, you have some sort of effect of gravity. That's kind of the idea of what that is. But right here, I'm setting up my uh, slate gravity assist. So slate is just a giant moon of Sarnus, kind of like Tylo in the Jewel system. And uh, if you just intersect it, kind of, uh, you know, directly. I don't know. I, you, I guess you could call that like east of the Sarnus system. Kind of, you can see where I'm kind of intersecting it, and it'll deflect you, you can get it to deflect you into um, an elliptical orbit around Sarnus, which I do for essentially every mission. Um, but yeah, it's essentially the exact same maneuver that you would do around Tylo with Jewel. A lot of KSP players are really familiar with that. So I've got my elliptical orbit, and you can see some uh, uh, undetected asteroids there. Those, they're those floating question marks there, kind of around uh, that inner moon orbit, which is actually Elu. This system has its own Pluto analog, so it replaces Elu um, as the Pluto analog and turns Elu into an Enceladus analog, um, which is pretty cool. But there goes my slate gravity assist. There's Elu there on the left, but we're actually going to make use of some more gravity assist to lower our our uh, our orbit. So because we're actually running really low on fuel, and I want to circularize kind of around that little ring area where you see a lot of those um, asteroids floating because I'm going to be ending up docking with these asteroids in a later date so I can, uh, you, you, you know, use this base as a refueling point for further missions. If you see that, like, light gray circular orbit all the way out from Sarnus, that's the wormhole right there. That's what I've been going through for this uh, series that'll spit you out on the other side of the Calbelo system. I'm just kind of trying to set up another uh, flyby of slate to lower my periapsis just a little bit so I can save fuel on circularizing around Sarnus. Um, just gotta, I think I'm just gonna mess with that for a little bit actually.
That looks pretty good. There we go. Second gravity assist round slate coming up. There we go. And I'm just going to raise my periapsis up again just a little bit so that I'm not actually flying into Elu's orbit. That'll kind of increase my risk of just randomly getting flung out into space if I cross Elu's path um, on accident. So just raising that and I'm doing my circularization burn. Looks like I just about have enough fuel. So we're going to head, we're going to go ahead and execute that burn, which will be our final maneuver of this mission. But yeah, this base is pretty cool. I've got two huge uh, fuel tanks on either side, a solar array that I'll be able to deploy later on, one of those infrared telescope things for detecting asteroids. Um, I've also got one of the science modules in there, like that, you know, that giant one. Um, and then I've got the rings, the habitation rings, uh, some cupola modules to get a good view. I think I've got like four docking ports on here, or, or maybe more. And uh, maybe you'll get a better look at it later on. But I've got two of the large ore drills on the bottom of the space station and some uh, radiators for cooling uh, and a refinery at, at and I think near the center of the of the station it looks like we're circularized though so I'm going to detach our drone tug and just push it out of the way Sarnus is really cool it looks like it's got kind of like a blue sunset there or around the like eclipsed regions of not eclipsed the night sides I don't know but yeah, here we are in a circular-ish orbit uh, near where the asteroids are going to be. So I'm just de uh, disconnecting the struts here to my rings. Um, yeah, and we're about to spin those up to speed. One thing that you also have to do is make sure that one of the motors, if you have a dual system, is inverted so that they'll cancel out the torque from the other ring and so it won't make your uh, space station spin along with the wheel. Um, that's a good tip. Um, but yeah, let's spin it up. All right, look at that. Pretty, huh? That'll be nice, too. Now my Kerbals won't have to, I don't know, strap themselves to a treadmill in zero-g just to keep their bone mass from disintegrating like in Wally. -E, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I think I'm just going to do some space walks just to show it off a little bit. Uh, we can check out the base a little bit. Got uh, this cupola module here. Can't really see anything. Um, but yeah, let's do a spacewalk. got these science experiments mounted here but I'm about to realize I didn't uh, pack a scientist along with the mission <laughs> trying to operate them with an engineer uh, it can't be operated externally by a s without a scientist so you know and look you got slate and elu in the back they're kind of lined up that's interesting it's on the left there they look almost the same size at this distance but slate is uh, much bigger um, almost curb in size just like Tylo Yeah, there's actually another um, little planetoid inside the rings called, like, Ovok or Hale or something. I can't remember. I'm actually planning on doing a Sarnus 5 or 6 or however many moons there are in this system. Just like a Jewel 5 where you take one craft and land on all the moons. Here's a little shot of the interior of one of the habitation modules. But yeah, like, some, some people do, like, Jewel 5 missions where they'll take one craft and land on all all the moons of uh, the Jewel system. I want to do a video in the future, or maybe a series of videos, uh, doing a Sarnus 5 or 6. I don't actually know how many moons there are in this system. But yeah, here's my refueling base. I'll be using it in more videos. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you.